we see the height and reach advantage for Brian Mendoza. Uh, he may not use that because he wants to get on the inside. Both these fighters right in their prime ages. Uh, Zoo will be uh, 29 Ladies and 19 and days. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Gold Coast Convention Center here in beautiful Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia as No Limit Boxing and the Rose Brothers in association with Premier Boxing Champions and TGB Promotions presents the main event, the featured attraction of the afternoon and sponsored by strategic partners, Tourism and Events Queensland and major events Gold Coast. This bout is sanctioned by the WBO. President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor in Attendance, Danny Lee, along with the AMBF. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside. From England, Steve Gray. From Australia, Adam Height. And from Japan, Katsuhiko Nakamura. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge. He will be giving instructions after the introductions from Minneapolis, Minnesota in the United States, Mark Nelson. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Super Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, live on Foxtel Main Event and KO Sports Pay-Per-View, and live from Australia's beautiful Gold Coast, it's showtime! Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring wearing red trunks with black and white trim, fighting out of Las Vegas by way of Albuquerque, New Mexico, in the United States. He weighed in at 69.85 kilograms, right at the limit of 154 pounds. His record, 22 wins, two losses, with 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Today he is making his international and Australian debut. Here is the WBC Interim World Champ and tonight's challenger. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the WBO number two world rank contender. Introducing Brian Labala. across the ring, the defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner, wearing teal trunks with white trim. Residing in Karamba and fighting out of Sydney, Australia, he weighed in at 69.44 kilograms or 153 pounds. Representing the outstanding boxing Dynasty, his record stands at 23 wins, no losses, 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome boxing's popular superstar of Australia tonight, making the first defense of his newly acquired title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the undefeated, the reigning and defending WBO Super Welterweight Champion of the World, introducing Once again, a referee in charge is Mark Nelson, now to give instructions. Gentlemen, as we discussed earlier, punches right here on the belt are not considered low. You had your instructions earlier. You both know what I expect. A clean championship fight. Just obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. Here in the Gold Coast, the gold on the line for the first time for Tim Zhu as a belt holder. Brian Mendoza, chip on his shoulder, ready to record another major upset. And he comes out swinging that left hand, and that left arm now has an ornate owl tattoo on it. The story there a few years ago when he was at a crossroads wondering if 
professional boxing was going to be the right career choice. He came across an owl where they usually aren't seen. He was impacted so much because an owl symbolizes uh, inner wisdom, change, transformation, intuitive development, good luck, and self-actualization. Well, he got the tattoo, and here he is fighting for a championship. Great opportunity right here for Mendoza. Again, he's been an underdog his whole life. So him being here in a different country and Tim Su's hometown, it's just nothing to him. Again, he's being aggressive like you said he might be in the, the very opening of this round. Mendoza came to us. Oh, oh already. Uh, Tim, the right hand. Yeah, Tim Zhu getting it right in and right away. Uh, Mendoza came two weeks in advance to try and acclimate himself, uh, which is a smart move. Uh, we talk about Zhu coming being knocked out, in the, or being knocked down, excuse me, in, in two fights in the first round. But of course, we know he had that great start against Ocampo. We'll see if he can get his power going here early in this fight. And again, Mendoza is not a big volume puncher, but he is really precise with his punches. Punches, and when he lands, oh my God, he, he's got power. Oh, there's the right hand. Zhu walked into the right hand of Terrell Gaucher in the opening round of his American debut, the second knockdown of his career, and gets rattled there momentarily as definite feeling out process on Tim Zhu's part here. A minute 15 left in the opening round. Tim Zhu usually gets hit with the right hand. There it is again because he does not walk in with the jab. He does not know how to use that jab. He's got to get on it. Now the jab is one of the few flaws in Tim Zhu's arsenal. Under a minute left here in a feeling up process, opening three minutes. It's been interesting, for most of this round, Mendoza has been kind of on his, on his back foot, even though he's been able to land some power punches from that posture. There's the right hand from Zhu that misses, but we saw him club Tony Harrison with that right hand. Able to jolt Ocampo. And here in the final 15 seconds, Brian Mendoza utilized the ring, has initiated some attacks. And there's Zhu landing a right hand in the final seconds of the first round. Well, in round two, Mendoza told us that when you go into the ring against a guy you're expected to beat, it's not the same as upsetting the odds, upsetting the world, and even shocking the world. It's so much sweeter. He's done it in back-to-back -back fights. The sweetest victory would be right here tonight in Australia. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely getting used to those type of fights. And here he is. He's got another opportunity to prove that and, and do so. Again, the first round, a really tactical, uh, a tactical fight, but a lot of power shots landed from both sides. And Maul mentioned earlier how few jabs they collectively land uh, in fights. Both these men throw power punches, anything other than the jab, most of the time, and that's what they essentially land most of the time. Yeah, coming into this fight, Zhu averages around 54 punches per round, which is slightly below the division average of 56. Coming into this fight, Mendoza just throws an average of 42 punches per round. Yeah, he, Mendoza's very economical, and that has created some close decisions. Uh, you know, uh, he kind of walked away with one against Lamana, but in some other fights, you know, he's put himself behind the eight ball with not Jesus enough Jesus Ramos, fight. he landed yeah. an average of five punches around over ten rounds over the then undefeated Jesus Ramos. Argument can be made that he should yeah. still be undefeated following that encounter with Erickson Luther. And then that fight with Ramos, he got ripped to the body. So that's another, that's a good thing. I mean, that's a thing for Sue to, to, to go in and attack the body because Mendoza can't take those body shots. Well, and, Ra and, and Tim Zhu has on two different occasions landed over 90 body punches in a fight, so he can do that. Yeah, he dropped Jeff Horn with two body punches, dropped Steve Spark with two body punches. Tim Zhu loves to go to the body. Both fighters, that, you know, go going in forward, no jab, having their moments. Uh, I could see Mendoza landing that uppercut 
that he knocked down um, uh, Rosario. And, and again, I could also see Tim Su land the right hand. So, I mean, it's just the waiting process really on who lands a big shot. Stakes have never been higher, hence the cautious start. Half-hearted attempt at that right uppercut by Mendoza. Ooh, ooh, wings and misses wildly with an overhand right to Mendoza. There's a one-two from Zhu. The straight right hand of Zhu is, he's inching it closer and closer. Um, what it does when it lands, we'll see. Uh, but it's going to land pretty soon. He's, he's starting to even use the jab a little bit to set it up. Yeah, against Tony Harrison, that's what he did. He started to pick it up after the third, break them down little by little take him to the ropes and it seems like that that's what he's trying to do against Mendoza and he told us tonight he thought the fourth round was when he would pick things up well, we just saw Miguel Flores said he'd start to pick things up in round six when it started right away in the last <laughs> point <laughs> there's the jab that we don't always see from Tim Su, but when he does throw it it's very very effective and there you see him trying to get the right hand in behind it uh, but Brian Mendoza showing us a, a, a jab. We talk about the fact that that's not a weapon they use a lot, but they both have one and can use it. And that's Mendoza trying to land the left hook, which is, of course, a big weapon for him. Round number three, Zhu trained by his uncle Igor Golubev, married to his father Costa's sister, while Mendoza trained by Ismael Salas, who has been his trainer since Mendoza's entire family moved from Albuquerque to Las Vegas in 2018, where we have definitely seen Mendoza's fortunes change. And in fact, he's being supported tonight in Australia by none other than Mario Barrios, who made the trip down. They've sparred with each other. Barrios coming off his best win over Jorgeny Zugas. Beautiful jab right now from Mendoza. Beautiful straight punches, taking that state step back and waiting for Sue to come in. And again, landing those right hands. Framing as well by Mendoza. Overhand right. Zhu misses with the left hook to the body. There's a left hook to the body that lands for Mendoza. Not a lot known for his angles and yeah. movement. Not a lot thrown in this room so far from the suit. So Mendoza taking advantage of that. Nice combination by Zhu. Jab to the body, right hand upstairs, back comes Mendoza. You know, both these men are capable of being a good combination punchers, even though they don't throw a lot of volume. And we're seeing little signs of that. Triple jab from Mendoza. A little more accuracy, precise punching, than volume on uh, both sides. But again, being more effective right now, uh, Mendoza, but again, when Sue lets his hands go, I mean, they're, they're really lethal. Yeah, they both, again, throw below the division average in terms of punches thrown per round. Sue usually throws a lot more. And Sue normally lands about 40% of his power punches, everything other than the jab, which is a very respectable figure. And tonight, he's not quite there, I don't think, yet, but he's, he's, he's starting to set up those power punches. A lot more volume by yeah. Mendoza. A lot more volume from Mendoza. Good. You got. You want to take advantage of these moments. Zoot's giving you the the frame right there. He's standing right in front. Let them hands. Let hands go. And here comes the pressure from Zoot. Mendoza has never been down as a pro. Durable fighter. And this is 25th professional fight, 22 and 2. You know, so far the hand speed of Mendoza has been pretty impressive. Yeah, in this fight. yeah you're right. Para atrás ahora. 
con tu movimiento, no es que va a formar lío ni una pinga, pero con tu movimiento lo lleva a pasar, que cuando él va para atrás no tira. ¿Oíste? And here is where um, Zhu trying to get the right hand in and going downstairs as well. Uh, you can see what Tim Zhu's up to here. He's trying to get that right, that chopping right hand in and uh, exhorted <laughs> for his efforts. But he is, he's a young man who uh, right now wants to change things with his power. Passionate fan base in Australia for Tim Zhu and his maiden voyage as the champion looking to get on track here in the fourth. There's a left hook to the body by Zhu, but it's Mendoza's mobility that took a lot off of that fight, and Mendoza utilizing his footwork and angles, making it hard for him to be hit, and he just scored a nice jab, splitting the guard of Zhu. That was a good jab from Mendoza. You want to keep Zhu miss, uh, busy with that jab. When he does that, Zhu goes on that guard, and he, he stops throwing. So again, Mendoza's got to get on it. Good, good body fight. combination by Mendoza. Tim's lack of activity so far in this fight is obviously an issue for him, but again, he told us he thought these early rounds he's going to have to figure things out with Mendoza, but, you know, whether he's giving rounds away, they're pretty close rounds, I don't know. Yeah, last round I thought Mendoza took yeah, it. This round again, again being more, more, more effective with his punches, more volume for Mendoza. Sue's being he's he's waiting for that power Exactly. Shot. It looks like he's trying to trap Mendoza into a corner and land a big shot. He's looking for something. Meanwhile, the clock ticks away. He's looking for that right uppercut. <laughs> Triple jab by Mendoza, using it as a range fighter. That was a harder jab. But while Sue looks for something to land, you, you take advantage of those moments again for Mendoza. <laughs> and, he, and you gotta keep those hands up though. Mendoza's doing a little bit of trying to hold on the inside to buy time and then get outside. And you know what? He has the height and reach of those, Mendoza, but there he took a big right hand. He's trying to use it by boxing there. Zhu told us Mendoza style, awkward, that herky jerky motion, landed a good shot there. Mendoza goes upstairs, but boy, you could see the look on Mendoza's face. He felt the power yeah. of Zhu with that punch. Yeah, that definitely worried him a bit, that right hand. He took it like a champ, but again, you know, you, you gotta keep those hands up. And that's the thing about Zhu. This kind of mental pressure on you in his fights, it oftentimes produces results as the fight wears on. Yeah, well said. As it might look like he's not doing much, yeah, he's putting that pressure and definitely that mental pressure against Mendoza. Mendoza closes the round with more punches thrown and landed. There's Mendoza jabbing and then throwing a couple of really nice left hooks. And that speaks to the fact that he's just throwing more. He's doing more work. But that was the spot that you guys alluded to where Brian Mendoza said, hmm, this guy can have a little bit. And that was a really nice right hand uh, following the jab for Zoo. And of course, that sequence is exactly the strategy he'd like to employ a lot in this fight. Back up, back up, guys. Start of round of five, and Mendoza goes upstairs with the jab before going to the body. Faster start here to the fifth frame. That round was a really close round. Both of them had their moments. Even though Sue's, you know, volume is not as, as much as, as Mendoza, but he's being really effective with the right hands. 
one of the loudest supporters you'll hear in the crowd is Tim Zeus' partner, Alexandra. There's the jab from Sue, cornering uh, Mendoza. You, you want to stay away from the ropes. Yeah, ask so Tony Harrison. Cool. You know, Marl talked about the fact, and it's true, Mendoza's never been down in this career. He has taken, just took a huge left hook from Tim Zhu, and boy, he, he fought right through it. Punch resistance, one of his forte. Yes, it is. And that was before he took the uppercut, because he also yeah. landed an uppercut, and you alluded to that, uh, Al, that both of them have beautiful uppercuts. Oh, on cue, a beautifully executed left uppercut by Zhu. And well, he, and Mendoza has this too, so, you know, you got to be careful. Oh, what did you tell us? After round four, I'm going to start taking over. Well, he's taking over here in the fifth, especially with the more eye-catching shots. What have these fighters done to the head? They're both good body punchers, but Zhu has landed more than Mendoza to the head, according to show stats. And there's a mouse underneath the right eye of Mendoza, that hard jab, the left hooks of Zhu beginning to take their toll. Yeah, Mendoza letting Zhu get off first and, and, and again, just backing up and going to the ropes. That, that, that's a big no-no. He's got to step on it again and stop. He entertains Zhu with the jab. Or, Upper the body punches. movement by Zhu. That sequence was key. He lands a good body shot, <laughs> Zhu, and then gets away from the left hook counter of uh, of Mendoza, so that's what he wants to keep doing, and things have changed here in this round, but remembering, Brian Mendoza took a pounding from Fundora before he found a big punch. Six rounds before he yeah. found the murderous left hook, right hand left hook combination that recorded one of the biggest knockouts of the year, and definitely one of the biggest upsets of the year that set up Brian Mendoza for this opportunity, his first championship fight. Yeah, the point is that neither of these fighters will be out of this fight until it's over. Right. And I like that attack that, that Sue's giving right now, uh, uh, Mendoza, because he, he has him in a position where Mendoza doesn't know what's coming. Yeah. He doesn't know if the right hand right hand's coming or the uppercut. He, he's has, he has him guessing. And a left hook, too, from Sue. All right, let's go to Steve Farhood. Mo, lots of good father-son combinations in the history of boxing. On September 30, Kostya and Tim Zhu became the sixth father-son combo to have won world titles. You see some of the other names there, big names like Floyd Patterson, Leon Spinks, and Corey Spinks. Kostya Zhu, a Hall of Famer who was clearly the best 140-pounder of his era. He last fought in 2005. And if you want a father-daughter team to add to the mix, May I suggest Hall of Famers Muhammad Ali and Layla Ali. Mm -hmm. Pretty good pair as well. The uppercuts and then the right hand from Zhu. And as Abner aptly pointed out, a variety of punches last round from Zhu that really made a difference and is starting to show on the face of Brian Mendoza. Tim Zhu with his best round of the fifth, and we begin round number six, and Zhu looking to establish the jab, using it not only as a range finder, as a bit of a feint as well, trying to get Mendoza to bite him. Mendoza now coming forward with the jab, and lands that hard left hand. So Mendoza looking to bounce back here in the sixth. Very important point for Mendoza to try and do this. To, to, to reclaim a little bit of the edge that he may have had in a couple of those early rounds. Yeah, Mendoza is always going to be in this fight, no matter what. We saw it uh, against Pindola down in all the cards, and then next thing you know, boom, he knocked him out. So again, a good good start for Mendoza. Boxing good, angles, bo body work. He's got to keep turning soon. Jabs to the body by Zuna. Zhu loves to go to the body, as we've mentioned, Al's had four knockdowns courtesy of body shots in his past. One of the things that Tim Zhu is using the left hook uh, for, among other things, is stopping the movement of Mendoza when he's trying to get away. Yeah, Mendoza was mobile in the yeah. first few rounds and used that to his advantage, but you're right, Al, beginning to become more stationary in front of Zhu. Good head movement there by Mendoza. Remember, coming in, we expected a power display. That 40% is exactly what Zoo normally lands and power punches everything other than the jab. 
And that's where Mendoza doesn't want to languish on the ropes. Definitely not as many power punches thrown as was anticipated no. going into the fight. When you look at the their respective resumes, but again, every fight is its own entity. And as we've mentioned, this one is for a championship. Uh, an unlikely championship opportunity for Brian Mendoza just a, a year and a half ago. And all he's done is is work his way into title contention, coming down under for the first time, leaving the United States, has said all the right things, has handled himself like a professional, but now has to get the job done against the undefeated Tim Zhu. Yeah, an opportunity of a lifetime here. There's a, there's a title on the line. I mean, he's got the goods. He's, he's got enough to, to perhaps, you know, uh, win this fight, Mendoza. But again, Zhu is always there. Countered left hand by Mendoza to the face of Zhu. And that's the punch that, you know, he really wants to land in yeah. this fight. And Zhu has been able oh. to avoid it for the most part. And there's a left hook upstairs by Zhu. Ooh, he misses with that sweeping left hook. And if you're Mendoza, you want to use Sue's aggression to your benefit. All right, wait for him to come in and catch him with that either right hand or overhand right. We have reached the midpoint of this 12-round, 154-pound championship fight from Australia. Mendoza throwing it nice uppercut on the inside of course both men as we pointed out have that weapon and that was at one of the counter left hooks but Zhu also got his right hand in uh, during that sequence neither of those punches landing perfectly but they're kind of giving you an idea of the strategy of these men round, seven. round number seven if you were asked Tim Zhu Hey, are you a boxing fan? He'd say, no, not really. I love to fight. I'm a huge basketball fan. I'm a Golden State Warriors yeah. fan, although we saw in that feature also a big Chicago Bulls fan. But yeah, a guy who really is here to, to make the best living, but just to show that he is in, at his heart a blood and guts warrior. Well, he grew up in boxing rings. He grew up around it. Uh, and while he was interested in other sports, he kind of knew this was where the talent lie was yeah. at. In fact, he enrolled in gymnastics first yeah. when he was six, then rugby at 10. And both he and Mendoza took up the sport of boxing at the same time, the age of 15. And they both had limited amateur experience. So let's bring in our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhol. Well, Mo, I think this is a very interesting fight. Three of the six rounds, I think, were very, very close. I have it dead even. I thought Mendoza... He's fighting the fight of a cutie. He's taking a couple of steps left, a couple of steps right, making Zhu miss. Very uncharacteristic for Mendoza, but it's working for him. I have it 57-57 after six rounds. Steve Farhood's in the Boxing Hall of Fame, where he should be. An interesting by Zhu. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, here comes Triple the Triple right uppercuts by Zhu. And here comes Mendoza. Finish your point out. No, he was saying Mendoza's fighting the fight of a cutie, but now he's having a hard time but he's got to fight back because Zhu earned it so it really speaks to Steve's point midpoint of the seventh three hard right uppercuts there's an uppercut from Mendoza but Zhu beginning to take it to Mendoza has him in the corner Mendoza trying to hold on gets clipped with a right hand another right hand by Zhu. Very few fighters in boxing can land that chopping right like Zhu, but Mendoza's landed some good power punches to kind of thwart him a little bit. And Mendoza biting down on his mouth guard, doubled over, but continues to fight back, Abner. Yeah, and this is this is exactly what we were expecting. The back, back and forth type of action. Uh, and again, power shots landed from both sides, but Tim Sue's definitely shot the uppercut. Got the best of Mendoza, and right now he's retreating. No. Careful with that punch, a rabbit punch, but again, the clubbing right hand. And now Zhu going to the body. Mendoza looking to stand his ground, gets hit with another uppercut, a left hook. Tim Zhu beginning to really come into his own here with 30 seconds left in the seventh. And Ismael Salas told Mendoza in the corner, you got to pick your hands up. Put your hands up, you're getting hit too much. Six thousand loud and boisterous Australian fight fans. Majority, large majority supporting Tim Zhu. Goes to the body of Mendoza. Great round for the champ.
Oh, that was a big round for Zoo, and it started. Well, did we mention Brian Mendoza has never been down? Yeah, yeah. and wow. that's why he takes a monstrous uppercut and doesn't go anywhere. I mean, look at that punch. That's and he was hit with so many chopping rights. I'm right on cue from Tim Zoo, and you know he was hit with as many good power punches as Tim Zoo can hit you within a round. He didn't go down. Yeah, the right uppercuts that have been landing for Zeus, similar to the right uppercut that Mendoza used to defeat Jason Rosario when he took a fight on 10 days notice, moved up to 160 pounds, and then stopped the former unified 154-pound champion. Rosario has never fought since. Yeah, and we haven't seen that uppercut from Mendoza in this fight. I mean, uh, he'll throw it here and there, but he's got to let no. it go a lot more. Sue's right well, there. There's for that the jab by Al Bernstein's key to victory, double jab from Sue. And, you know, part of the reason is, as Steve pointed out, Mendoza was fighting a very tactical fight, yeah. trying to win these rounds, and he used the word cutie, which was a good phrase. And so that's not going to put you in a position to land some of those big power punches. And he had to fight back in the last round with power punches because he was hurt. And uh, there's their record. You know, uh, by the way, Brian Mendoza has never been 12 rounds. Zhu has been there twice and won. So as we get into the championship rounds, it'll be a place where Mendoza has not been. Yeah, I mean, the, the constant pressure from Zhu right now, putting Mendoza on the back. Not a lot of punches thrown for Mendoza either. So it's definitely making it a lot easier for Sue to get in. Tim Zhu said, you know, he was very blunt. He said, people think my defense is shit. <laughs> he said it's better than that. I don't think that, but he has some defensive liabilities. But definitely hittable. But he is hittable, but for the most part, he's worked on that. And his offense oftentimes is his defense. Is that the first time you said that word the, on Showtime? It's funny you're saying that. I've never said that on the air in my life. It's a quote. <laughs> it's a quote. What can I say? <laughs> but he kind of has like that shoulder roll. He pulls back Sue with his guard. So he, great defense. There it is. Kind of pulls back, comes back with the right hand. So great defense in this fight. Mendoza's hands are low, and he's backing himself into the corner. Tim Zhu stalking, measuring, looking to uncork that right hand. Yeah, he's kind of breaking down uh, Mendoza. Again, not a lot of punches thrown from Mendoza. Flubbing right hand, that left hook clipped. Mendoza, final 30 seconds of the eighth round. Good exchange. That right missile, like straight right hand, lands for Zhu. And look how Mendoza takes that right hand. He just smiles and then walks to the side like nothing. Again, he's got to pick those hands up. He's doing too much of the showboating. Again, the power. Now, that was Mendoza setting down on a good right hand. But what happened? Zhu walked through that punch and hit him with the left hook. So a lot of power from Zhu emanating from the right. Again, Abner pointed out he took that right hand so well, Mendoza. But I think some of that showboating was almost frustration yeah. by him because he knows he's not able to land the power punch. He's getting hit with them. And, you know, Zhu, th that's the point right there. There's a three-punch combination from Zhu. People think he is just a one-dimensional plotter. That's not really true. We begin the ninth round, the round in which he stopped Tony Harrison earlier this year. Mendoza, of course, carries his power late into fights, going to work with the jab, backing up, resetting, trying to utilize some of that mobility and footwork again, but again, finds himself against the ropes, although fires off a lead uppercut, and uh, Zhu responds with an uppercut in kind. A lot of a lot of more body work that, you know, Sue gave Harrison, 
uh, than he is doing in this fight against Mendoza, but definitely landing a lot of headshots, a lot of power shots. And yeah, that, that has to do with uh, Mendoza's mobility. He's moving a lot. Yes. Yeah, that was, and there was that one sequence where Zhu really went to nobody a lot, but then he started landing all those headshots. There's that overhand right from Zhu. Known for his relentless combination of precision, power, and aggression, and putting it on display here in the ninth. Okay, that right hand is starting to get in a lot easier. Short clubbing right hand by Zhu. Body shots, head shots, who's landing more of what? Body shots, interestingly, Mendoza with a few more than Zhu, and Abner alluded to Zhu not throwing, but when it comes to head shots, not only is there a, a gap, but Zoos have been much harder. Zhu known for his good timing, able to control distance well, and has Mendoza cornered less than a minute and a half left in the ninth. Zhu digs to the body. And the big point that Abner made is not a lot of offense coming back from Mendoza. No, Mendoza's time. offense has been muted by the pressure and the attack of the defending champ. Yeah, I mean, the pressure's there from Sue, but I mean, you got an opportunity to let your hands go and keep Sue busy as well, but he's not doing so. He's moving his head, he's moving backwards, but not throwing punches, Mendoza. He tried there, but he came up short. Which he was doing a little more of in the early Yeah, he way. was, exactly. Yeah. When Steve mentioned that, that he was being cute with those punches, yeah, that's what he's doing that. Cuffing right hand again by Zhu that lands. Oh, stabbing jab to the body by Zhu, and another jab to the body before he goes upstairs with a left hook. And Zhu now beginning to tee off on Mendoza. Keeps him in front of him. Mendoza backing up, and Mendoza fires off a jab. I'm liking this suit tonight. I like how he's so responsible with this offense, uh, the, the defense as well, pressuring well, picking his shots good. I mean, again, the body work, not as much as I've, we've seen in the past, but again, great work from Sue. And smart pressure by Tim Zhu. Picked off those punches from Mendoza with his high guard, does it again. There's a counter right by Mendoza. Tim Zhu landing the right hand again, as he has been doing. And that one was a lead right hand there. That one, he didn't even require the jab to get it in. And Mendoza lounging and languishing on the ropes and in the corner more. And I mean, those are right hands that when Tim Zhu lands them, people get hurt. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is astonishing <laughs> that Mendoza is able to take those. But of course, Zhu winning these rounds now with this dramatic offense. That's the chopping right hand from Zhu. That is such an effective weapon for him. Round number 10. We just heard Drake in between rounds, and maybe that's what the owl tattoo is about <laughs> for Brian Mendoza. It's October. Drake just dropped another album. Could be. Maybe he's an OVO supporter. Hey. <laughs> but the way things are going right now, he might have to knock out Tim Zhu like a light. Hey, like a light, Abner Mata. <laughs> like a light. Hey, that was... even I get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Tim Zhu looking to continue that attack with the uppercuts. And Mendoza has to get away from the ropes. That is obvious. Yes, he's got to stay away from the ropes. He's got to stay away from taking those right hands. Uh, Al mentioned that he's taking them really well, but then again, how many can you take? And, and Sue is definitely landing those really well. So again, you know, great chip from Mendoza, but he's got to do a lot more. He's got to be busy with the punches. And since the second half of this fight started, it's been all Tim Zhu, according to our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhood. Two minutes left in the tenth. Now that was Mendoza from too far out, throwing uppercut, an uppercut, yeah. but he was committed to the punch, and that's at least what he has to try and do, but it, boy, if he does that too many times from far out, he'll get countered and hurt. Now there's Sue going downstairs. And upstairs. Up. Yeah. Mixing it up well. Yeah, Mendoza's giving uh, Sue more of a body frame, standing right in front of him for Sue to let go of those body shots. There's a lead right hand by Sue. And again, this 10th round is the farthest that Mendoza has ever gone. So should we get into round 11, that will be foreign territory for him, but not for Zhu, who has twice won over that distance.
And the total power punch is everything other than the jab. A, Zhu is right at the 40% mark that he normally is at. And for but not the numbers any of us expected in terms of no. power punches no. thrown and landed. You would have thought punch. more uh, from probably overall, but nonetheless, the Zhu is landing enough to control his fight. But again, it's the mobility from Mendoza. He's moving well, he's a lot. He's hurt by that oh. right hand, Abner. He's trying to hold on here. He got clipped with another right hand. Mendoza in trouble along the ropes. Digs down, goes to the body. Zhu sells it as a low blow. Referee says, keep fighting. <laughs> that was not a low blow. That was a good body shot from Mendoza. The action now getting as rough as the outback in Australia with 15 seconds left in the 10th. Zhu beginning to try to unload on Mendoza. Right hand, another right. Right uppercut, jacks the jaw. How in the hell is Mendoza still standing? That guy can take a shot. You good? That's a punch. Oh, blood. Well, Tim Zhu had a monster round and hurt Mendoza at various times in the round. The right hand was a primary weapon, but trying the uppercut, well, that punch was, it did stray a little bit low, I think, uh, underneath the, the thing. But you know what? Mark Nelson wasn't buying it, and two, Zhu had to go back to work. And after that, he hurt Mendoza again. And that's exactly what Mendoza's corner told him. Hey, you hurt him with that body shot and you stop. Defend yourselves at all times. He, he, he had the opportunity right there for Mendoza. So he told him, go to the body, protect yourself, put your hands up, and give it your all. These are the last two rounds. Round 11 for Brian Mendoza is 100th as a professional fighter. It's round number 128 for Tim Zhu. And really, these are the do or, do or die type of rounds for Mendoza. He's got to go all out. I mean, we guess that he's losing this fight so it's it's either a knockout for him to get the victory i'm gonna be the guy to say it because somebody has to those early rounds may have been close maybe they weren't close <laughs> i don't know i'm just saying i certainly think tim zoo is winning this fight but uh and he's dominating especially this in this hometown this I, I, we would think yeah and oh mendoza clubbing him with the left and against the ropes zoo unloading a mendoza mendoza valiantly firing back our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhood, has Tim Zhu opening up a big lead. Zhu looking for that moneymaker, the right hand. And the key element is the last four rounds yeah. straight. And that's what Zhu has done. He is closing the show here. And again, 11th round that Mendoza's never seen before in his career. Another right hand, another right. And Mendoza comes back with a combination, goes to the body, eats a right uppercut. Another right uppercut on the inside. Mendoza desperately trying to stay on his feet. Wow. Yeah, he's just being overwhelmed by the punches by Sue, and he doesn't want to open up if you're Mendoza. He's trying to throw some punches, but if he does, he's going to get hit. Overwhelming pressure, an offensive onslaught from Tim Zhu in the 11th. Brian Mendoza desperately trying to hold on, goes to the body with a couple of lefts, is back on the ropes. There on the inside, you see Mendoza ripping off a nice uppercut, but he's not able to hurt Zhu at this juncture. Mendoza along the ropes using the jab to try to buy some time to try to keep Tim Zhu at distance, but he needs to get off the ropes. Yeah, he needs and Tim Zhu is not allowing him to do so. Body shot by Zhu. Tim Zhu methodically breaking down Brian Mendoza.
Another lead right hand from Mendoza, but he eats a couple of rights from Zhu. A third right hand at the bell. Listen, are you guys good? And all good. Yes. Protect yourself. I'm gonna have the doctor look at the cut. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna call time. Okay. The, the cut's good. I just want you to look at it because it's on the lip. But we got one full round left. That's all. Doctor's gonna look at it. And final round. Brian Mendoza told us it's crazy how the world turns. One day you're at the bottom. You're not getting any calls and everybody's forgotten you. The next, you're fighting for a world title. He has less than three minutes to try to ensure that he brings that title back to America. As Tim Zhu putting on a clinical performance, especially in the second half of this fight. He told us after round four, I was gonna go to work. That's almost exactly when he started doing it. And he has put together uh, a series of terrific rounds. Uh, and the last, from round seven on, has just been an onslaught from Tim Zhu. Yeah, it's not over till it's over. And Mendoza no. has the power to put you down in these later rounds too. Even though, the, you know, these rounds are new for him, but he, he's known as cut to come back. And again, towards the end, he landed some really good right hands uh, at Sue. So again, he's still dangerous. And Tim Sue said to us, you can't relax or be unfocused against Mendoza because of that, and because he throws his punches from different angles. It is that boxing that Mendoza slept on. He stopped doing that. Tim Zhu's gone 12 rounds twice against Takeshi Inoue and in his American debut against Terrell Gaucher. March of 2022 as Brian Mendoza comes back with a combination. And in both those fights, Tim Zhu did exactly what he's done here, closing super strong in the final round. Though in this round, actually Mendoza's done some better work than he did in the earlier round, or did in the recent rounds. Yeah, de definitely Mendoza's doing a great job of just boxing, staying in the outside. But uh, w would winning this ooh. round be enough even to win him this fight? Unlikely, I think. Final minute of... Tim Zhu's first fight as full 154 pound belt holder. One of three male champions from Australia hoping to solidify his standing as a champion with his first successful title defense. Just over 30 seconds left in the fight. Does Mendoza have one Hail Mary left in his arsenal? Upset Jason Rosario with a fifth round knockout. Came from behind, sensationally knocking out Sebastian Fundora to earn this title fight. 15 seconds to change his life. They go the 12 round distance and from where we sit, Tim Zhu doing more than enough to retain the title. And look at the numbers. Uh, it, it, the power punch is the big difference here, obviously. You know, and, and the power of those punches and landing close to the 40% that he normally lands, not maybe as many, but still uh, it was that accuracy as a power puncher that ultimately did the trick. Uh, neither man had a lot of volume in this uh, fight. Surprising. A little bit, yeah, although they're not super volume punchers, it seemed like there'd be a little more.
Well, when we talked about at the start of the fight that coming in, you know, they combined for 24 of their 29 punches landed being power shots. Uh, I, for one, definitely expected a, a more well, but, more pyrotechnic. Uh, right, but most of what they landed were power yeah. punches, which is the point. And Zoo, of course, yeah, landed. More than Here's anything. the thing. If Brian Mendoza didn't have the chin he had, we'd be probably talking about a knockout exactly. by yep. Zoo. Yeah. Yeah, it was more of the boxing that uh, Mendoza was trying to do. Yeah, and here we'll take a look back at, at, at some of the, the offense. Right hand. Yeah, Tim Zhu was so effective with the right hand. He landed from every posture. And there's Mendoza trying to hold on. And that chopping right hand from Zhu is what's impressive. And, you know, the, the funny thing about it is we talk about him want, needing to set that right hand up with the jab. He often lands it like that as a lead punch. Yeah, that right hand is always a lead punch for him. Forget the jab. He's yeah. got a lead right hand <laughs> and a powerful one, too. And, I mean, just the barrage of punches, the, the uppercut. I mean, he just overwhelmed Mendoza with those punches. And again, you got to give it to Mendoza. He took some shots, some really hard shots. So <laughs> the chin's there for Mendoza. Still never been down as a pro in uh, this fight. His 25th professional fight. Those were all knockout punches. <laughs> they were. They're all punches that are supposed to knock you out. And as we mentioned, Mendoza had never been that 12-round distance, so he, he was he couldn't pull a rabbit out of his hat later in the fight. And seeing that replay, you perhaps Ladies think that you know, the fight will continue like that. After 12 rounds of action, the judges are in agreement. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Adam Height, scores about 116 to 111. Steve Gray sees it 116 to 112, and Katsuhiko Nakamura scores them out 117 to 111, all three in favor of the unanimous decision winner. And he is still the successfully defended the title for the first time. Tim Zhu, 24-0. He and Brian Mendoza forging respect. And Tim Zhu will talk to Ben Damon from Foxtel Australia. Tim Zhu, you said that you didn't feel any different being a world champion, but now that you've won a fight, you've defended your belt, do you feel different? Charlo, where you at? Where you at, buddy? What do you think Jamel Charlo would have thought watching that performance? He'll probably, in his delusional head, he'll probably think that he's gonna beat me. Come get it. Come get it. Do you think he will come get it? Yeah, for sure, man. He, he fought Canelo, man. Best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, you know? And I think now, let's prove who's the he is the best 154, but let's prove, prove it to everyone who is really the king of the division. A word on Brian Mendoza, because you hit him with everything. Man, he's tough, he's crafty, he's slick, he's got power. He's, uh, he's world class for a reason, you know, he's just behind me. What did you set out to do here today? Because we saw uppercuts and left hooks. It, it seemed that you knew the punches that were going to get him. To have, have some fun in there and perform for everyone here. Simple, man. It's, I told you, it's my last hooray. And we, we finished off with a bang. Hopefully, we can go to Vegas all together. Well, the word for not only the people of the Gold Coast who've embraced you, but Australia, who's been on this journey with you since the beginning and particularly in recent years. Just tell everyone what it means to you. It's unbelievable, man. I've got a pack of lions with me, uh, all the boys of training camp, all the boys behind in my team, all my sponsors, and fucking everyone here, every single person in Australia. The support's been unreal. Thank you to all my day ones. Congratulations, Tim Zoo.
You are and you remain the world champion. See you all in Vegas.